and it'll be 405. Hello, this is the Gary Community School Corporation Fiscal Management Board meeting. Today is Tuesday, September 21st. It is now 4.05 p.m. Um, we have a, a, a pretty in-depth agenda today. And at this time, I would like to call the meeting to order. And can I, the roll call, we have um, Chancellor Tom Thomas Keon. Present. And Shanita Starks, not here. And at this time, the state has not appointed the um, fourth person for the board. And of course, my name is Dr. Marla Mitchell. Uh, we don't have a quorum today, so this meeting will be for information. Um, we're gonna move on and have acceptance of the agenda. Again, um, Chancellor Keon, has you, have you had an opportunity to look over the agenda? I did, and it okay. looks fine to me, thank you. All right, the agenda being in order, um, we're gonna go ahead and um, accept this agenda and to the archives as, um, as printed. Um, I'm gonna turn it over for the business services and chief financial officer report. Ms. Nicole Wolverton, you wanna proceed with your, um, your report? Absolutely, good afternoon. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm gonna try to share my screen here real quick. Oh, Daryl, is it possible for you to allow me to do that? Says the host needs to give me permission. All right, if you guys, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, so the items that I wanted to go over with um, you guys all today were our 2022 uh, DLGF budget. Um, so this is kind of our first look at the budget for next year. And again, these are just on our levied funds. So our education, operations, debt service, and referendum. So the um, document on my screen is our notice to taxpayers, our form three. This is the advertisement for the overall budget. Our public hearing date will be on Friday, October 8th. And then our adoption will be on Monday, October 25th. And then our estimated maximum levy for school operations was approximately $28 million. And our tax cap this year was projected to be about $24 million. So we're anticipating about $4 million net for operations. And that those figures come directly from the DLGF. But this sheet is just basically a summary budget sheet. So this has our budget estimates, both for referendum, debt service, education, and operations, and then our total levy that we're requesting for those funds. So in total, we have about a $91,000 budget that we're asking for for 2022. And um, the estimated levy is about 56 million. So that was it for this sheet. Um, this has also been approved by DUAB uh, Director Pete Miller. Um, that's another requirement for DUAB as well that he signs off on this formal advertisement that we're in compliance for the DLGF. Roll back up real quick, bear with me. Summary sheet. I'm going to get into the, the nitty gritty part of it, the exciting part. <laughs> um, so this is kind of our, our summary comparison of our year to year. So our 2020, 2021, and then our proposed budget for this year. Um, the kind of the meat and bones of everything. So you can see what we've requested in the past year over year, what we've actually received, and then what we're requesting going forward. So the major items are debt service, which is our long-term debt. Um, Dr. Mitchell, I know that you've always wanted me to kind of emphasize that our long-term debt is our, our bonds and our leases um, and anything that uh, it's, so it's not our, it does include our, our common school loans, 
um, that have been suspended through 1065, but these are not, you know, our accounts payable short-term one-year debt. This is long-term 15, 20-year debt projection service fund. So we have asked for about a $16 million debt service. It's a very healthy fund um, to pay all of our required debt for 2022 in and out. I did increase it slightly because we are anticipating a higher projected collection for our um, textbook, textbook reimbursement. Ms. Wolverton, sorry, mm -hmm. can I inter interrupt you? Um, Ms. Wade needs a, a new lake she's trying to get in and I want to make sure we help her get in. Ms. Daryl, Wade. if you can hear me, can you send her the Zoom password and code again, please? We're all seeing this, sorry. <laughs> Just want to make sure she's getting it. Need a right. Pause one second. Let me call Daryl. Crystal says, who needs it, she will do it for us. Crystal is on the chat. I don't think I have her email address. I did just send her um, a start another link and ask her to check her link and check her um, mailbox um, and also in her junk mail as well. Chelsea has sent it. Can everyone hear me? Just barely, yeah. but. Uh, a link. I um, asked her to check her. Uh, spam mail as well as our personal mail for the for that link. I just resent it. Daryl, I just emailed you her personal email to try that one. Okay. Okay, I actually I sent it to her Gov. Her very Gov email, so I'll send it to that one now. I, I didn't hear you, but I sent you her personal, the Yahoo email. Yeah, I sent it to her um, work email. She's in now. You're sending it to the Yahoo? No, she's, she's got now. it. She's got, got it. it. I'm in. I'm in. Thank you. Hey, there she is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks Hi. for this. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not no trying problem. to let me No problem. We're glad you're able to join us. We just started. So Nicole's just starting with the uh, the budget um, for the school year. So go ahead, Nicole. Yeah. So I just briefly went over our form three advertisement for the taxpayers. Um, that states when our public hearing and adoption dates will be. Um, and then I do, just started on this summary page, so you didn't, you didn't miss much. Uh, I went over the debt service fund. That's pretty straightforward. Um, I did, next fund I wanna talk about was our education fund. 
Um, our education fund, we are anticipating about a 6% increase in our tuition support. And that was a figure that came out of our complexity um, grant information that we received from the state this spring. Um, so that equates about a $2 million increase in tuition support for the next fiscal year. And then they are also projecting about a 3% increase for the following fiscal year. Um, so we weren't able to increase that budget for that as well. Um, keeping in mind too, that we also now have this new 45% rule from the state that we need to be in compliance with as well. And then our operations fund is our major game changer this year. Um, if you recall last year, we were only approved for about $5 million in appropriations. Um, this is because again, the budget cycle is about an 18 month period. So last year, our deficit in operations was about $9 million specifically in that fund. So when we applied for our budget, we did not have enough um, cash flow essentially to be approved for the full additional appropriations. So we landed about 5.2 million. This year, however, because we have been able to really tackle that deficit in operations, um, we applied with about, about a $2 million deficit in that fund specifically. So we have pretty much back to normal appropriations. We're estimating or requesting about an $18 million budget for operations. Uh, we're right on track for spending about 15 to $16 million. I do think that um, this budget, I kind of asked for the moon in hopes that I'm gonna get as many appropriations as I can. Um, obviously we still have six more months to go or well, four more months, I guess technically now. Um, for the year end that once we receive our final December tax settlement, that'll go into the calculation to make sure that we have enough additional revenues to support our requested budget in 2022. So I do anticipate the actual approval amount for operations will be less than 18 million, but it will definitely be much higher than the 5 million we received last year. And then in our referendum fund, um, same situation because we received a pretty high, uh, higher than anticipated, first June um, tax settlement collection, I believe that we're gonna end up collecting more than we originally budgeted for for the last year. So we used about a 75% collection rate when we initially um, uh, started the referendum. So we weren't sure historically, you know, cause there is no historical data on what the collections would be. So that was kind of a conservative figure. But we're definitely going to be probably more than the 8.9 million. So we want to make sure that whatever additional appropriations we have, we can max them out. Um, so in the referendum budget this year, we still have that $1 million for the teacher raises. And that is to sustain the amount that we've already given them that was effective January 1 of 2021. So that million still will be out of that $12.5 million referendum money asked for. And then the additional um, allocations are for the subcategories, safety, extracurricular, preschool, things of that nature that our referendum committee and, um, you know, the advisors are, you know, giving us great ideas on, on kind of how to utilize the rest of that, that money. So this is kind of just a, a year over year. I know there's a lot of kind of, you may have some questions on this, but you can tell if that we're trending in a positive direction. Um, increasing all of our appropriations. Pretty much the remainder of the information in the packet was our line one um, expenses. I'll rotate this back, sorry. Um, so our form one is our line by line expense worksheet that breaks out every single category um, for referendum, for operations, education, into our actual appropriated line items. So I won't go through this in specific detail, but um, you've in, I've included all of those supported figures that we're requesting. And then same for our 4B form calculation that is at the end of the packet here. All my pages are rotated. This is basically just the uh, overall calculation worksheet. So it's that 18 month cycle uh, for each fund to make sure that you're projecting your ending operating costs for 2022 in a positive surplus. Um, so everything that we've asked for in terms of additional revenue and our expen expenditures, and our cash flow is positive in those accounts for 2022. 
So this is kind of a, can be a complicated worksheet, but essentially just ties out that everything's gonna have a positive balance here in this line 18 for each of the, of the requested funds. Mm -hmm. So we do have a couple of depending factors. Um, again, just how we're ending 2021, which I think we're, we're in a, a great position. Um, we're continuing to eliminate our deficit and our funds are becoming much more healthier. Um, education's always been a healthy fund, but in terms of operations. So depending on that last tax settlement, that really will be the justification for those additional revenues for 2022. Um, also, any additional transfers that we would want to make from a fund-to-fund -fund perspective. So we still have the option um, for transferring any sort of U.S. Steel funds or um, transfer line items like the referendum into the operating fund. Um, those type of things for budget balancing concerns. We still have many different fluctuations that we can do uh, to end the year as well. And then hopefully, I think because of our great positive cash flow situation that we have, I'm looking forward to in 2022 starting a rainy day fund. And um, that's something that Gary Schools has never had before. Um, I think now that we're having the ability to actually not only do, do well enough that we can pay our bills, but we actually can do well enough and save. Um, so I think it's, you know, a great uh, standing point that we can plan our future. You know, we're becoming more self-sufficient and financially stable. So I think that's very important. Um, and a vital step for our financial stability as well. So we've got a lot of things to look forward to in the upcoming months. I know this was kind of a, a quick overview um, of just our levied funds, but if you guys have any questions, I'd love to dive in and answer some of them. She's actually hoping that you do because she loves this stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me see. Find um, something. <laughs> yeah. Um. As I as I'm looking at, at the at the forms, I see that there's um, uh, three form Bs. Right. Um. You have the form B for the referendum, form B for operations, form B for debt service. Um. Can you just go over each of those forms? You spend a lot of time on the referendum, exempt operating. Um, Form B. Can you go over the Form B for um, operations and the Form B for the debt service? Let's see. This one is for our debt service. So Form 4B is, and you're, you're talking about this form, right, Dr. Mitchell? Yes, yes, the okay. Form B, yes. Yep. So this form in this first section is our last six months of this um, fiscal year. So from July to December of 2021. And it takes into account what our current July, or I'm sorry, our June 30th balance is where we stand currently and our estimated uh, tax collections for December. And then it kind of does a, you know, an in and out of what we anticipate our expenditures are going to be. So any of our long-term debt bonds that are due in December, um, which typically ours are on a, a July to December or June to December um, calendar year. Some just school districts are different, so they may have them at different times of the year. Um, but most of our notes pay out in December. So mm -hmm. it takes into account those expenditures. And then it says, you know, you have an estimated fund balance as of this December of 2021. Um, that kind of rolls into what you're requesting for the following year. So again, right. you go through a debt service schedule, checking off, you know, the, um, the two loan payments that you're going to make during 2022. And then that nets it against your tax levy that you're anticipating on receiving against any circuit breaker credits. And then that gives you a projected fund balance for 2022 as well. So for debt service specifically, um, you know, we are looking to, oh, I'm sorry, I keep, there we go. We do have a positive operating balance for debt service in 2022. Okay. And that's your line 18. Yes. All right. And can you do the same for us for operations? Yes, absolutely. So for our June 30th cash balance, and this is kind of what I mentioned earlier, um, you know, last year around this time when we applied for our budget, this June 30th balance was actually almost like a negative $9 million. So right now it's a negative $2.2 .2 million. So we've come a long way in, you know, that, that 18 month cycle, I think. 
Um, so that really greatly impacts um, how much money we're going to be able to collect in December and then our anticipated expenditures and then any sort of transfers that we're going to make into that fund as well, which currently we do have some transfers into education. Uh, there's a 15% transfer of our tuition support that goes from education into operations to help support that fund as well. And so then that ties into what we're requesting for 2022. Um, and then again, we've got that $28 million uh, approved levy from the DLGF and then our anticipated tax cap is about 24 million. So we're gonna net about $4 million. That's what we're anticipating and receiving in operations for 2022 is $4 million. So if you think about it, we've got you know 10 schools and we're anticipating spending about $15 million out of that fund. So you have to ask, you know, where does the additional um, actual revenue come from? So, and that does come from that educational transfer and things like that, some other miscellaneous revenues as well to help support that fund to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And again, that is, um, we're ending in a positive operating cash balance, line 18. It's small, however small, but it is positive. Um, again, a lot can change in the 18 month budget cycle. So that could go, you know, it could be end up being much higher would be my anticipation than, you know, 305,000. Right. Okay. All right, um, Ms. Starks, Chancellor Keon. Uh, I have no questions. All right, Ms. Starks. Nice hair, by the way, Ms. Starks. So you got a new a new look in this new part of the year. You're on mute. I said, yeah, I'm going into the fourth quarter, so I have to change it up. So that's, <laughs> we got to get ready, right? Um, no, I don't have any questions. I mean, I'm, I'm looking over the numbers and it looks as though that there's a positive trend. So that is, that's a great storyline for us right now. So that's positive, but right now, don't have any questions. Okay. Yeah, um, there was three questions um, that I did receive from Dr. McNulty, and one question was about the ADM count. Um, can you give us a little information about that ADM count for the year, for this yes. year? Yes. So we did um, finish up our ADM count and submitted it uh, last Friday. It was 4312. Um, which is about where we were last year, um, but we still have to go through two scrubs, if you will, with the DOE. So it could shake out to be a little bit higher or a little bit lower, but we're, we're right around 4312, which we're, um, we're cautiously optimistic about because across the nation, st uh, students are missing um, due to the pandemic. They've never come back to school. So many school districts, uh, they're reporting across the, the nation are just MIA. So, um, so that's where we are. Yeah, and by us having that that 4312, that's about the same as last year. Um, I'm thinking that the uh, the assumption that someone could make is that um, not very many of our students are missing. Am I correct with that? Or we had a lot of students transfer in as well, but we do have some students that are missing. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you know what percentage that may be missing, or have you estimated? No, because we have. Uh, I'm going to say Maryland, maybe about a hundred kids. That oh, we've still kids? been looking, okay. yeah, I'm, you know, give or take a few that um, I know that our truancy officers have still been trying to reach out to that have not enrolled in school and they have not, their their student information number has not turned up at any other school as either. Okay. All right. And I imagine those truancy officers, they're going to the homes to verify that Absolutely. They're, they're there in those homes. Okay. Right. All right. Um, another question that came in, let me pull it up. I don't want to misstate or anything. Um, The other question was, um, I guess this is for you, um, Ms. Wolverton, and that is a question that happens in, 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 in pretty much each of our board meetings. Um, can you um, just share a little bit and just really clear um, uh, what, what happened, you know, when, when you all took over the deficit, was that 120 million? And where is that at today? And how does that impact um, the 2022-2023 school year? So do you mean that the, the debt was 120 million? Yeah, you know, that was including buildings and everything. They, 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 they wanna know um, 
how it has that 120 million, it ha where, where has it moved to? Absolutely. So since that time, um, we are probably about $70 million on principal for our long-term debt. So again, right. that's our bond and leases. Um, it's continuing to go down as we continue to pay on principal. Mm -hmm. um, our overall deficit in terms of all funds, um, so that is, you know, not only including these levied funds, but all of our reimbursable funds and things of that nature as well. Our last reported de total deficit, I think, was um, around $2 million. So, and, and hopefully we're on track this year, um, you know, to, to not have a deficit at all. So that would be our goal, obviously. Um, and I think we're, we're in good shape for that, but, you know. Okay. Yeah. I'm you know, and, yeah. And, and that's always a question that we get. And so we just want to make sure that we're really clear on that. Um, that's when it comes in all the time. Yeah. That's and a fair then, question. And it's a good question because it is confusing. So. Right. Yeah. Right. And um, and the second part of that question was, what does that have and uh, what impact does it have on the 2022-2023 school year? I think they're getting at um, uh, the, 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 the piece that came out of the DUAP. Um, um, does that mean that the Gary schools will re return? to local control or will, uh, in the 2020, 22, 2023 school year, will MGT still be the emergency manager? So I think this is something that DUEB um, obviously will be evaluating as they move forward. I can't answer that question, but that's okay. definitely something that they will be evaluating. But definitely they'll be looking at, um, at some point into some sort of a transition with whatever that looks like um, so that uh, we can make sure that we're, um, you know, financially solvent and that it's going to stay right. that way. Okay. Yep. All right. That's that. And then the last and final question that I have, it was about the audit. And I know that audit was a pretty intensive audit, pretty in depth. I don't know if we have time to discuss that today, but maybe if we can um, just give a summary of the audit and maybe we can put that on the agenda for our next meeting the next quarter where maybe, maybe you all can go into a little detail about it. Um, I'm not sure what your what your pleasure is, Superintendent, but um, if you can um, shed a little light on the on the audit that transpired. Yeah, it was here. lengthy. Um, they were here for months, as they are at all school districts when they come. I'll let um, Nicole in a minute here give you a quick overview. We are going to discuss it at the DUEB board, board meeting next week as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, um, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Nicole, um, but I think we had 19 findings overall and we went down to like 13. I think we were at 15. So we were 15. down. Four okay. So we were down 23% um, mm -hmm. from uh, the year, the last prior uh, audit. Um, and every school district, and you know this, uh, Dr. Mitchell and, and uh, Tom, mm -hmm. are always are going to have findings. Um, but uh, the trend is we need to have fewer findings. And then certainly if we have repeat findings, those need to be corrected. And so that's what's happening. So we went from 19 to 15, um, and we continue to work on cleaning up those 15 as we move forward. But Nicole, if you want to talk a little bit about what they were or how it went, Sure, absolutely. Um, so yep, yeah, we did have the 15 findings this year, which was down from 19 the previous year. Um, those findings, in, we actually only had one financial finding, which is really great um, for school district of our size and, and the amount of revenue that we have. Um, and then the rest were based on child nutrition cluster, our Title I, and our special populations. Um, those were the three other federal compliance areas that were audited. Um, and for the most part, all of the corrective action plans that have already been submitted are actually in place. Um, so we're on top of that. So we're anticipating that, you know, next time we're audited, audited from um, 20. So this last audit was from July 1 of 2018 through June 30th of 20. So our next audit period would be of July 1 of 20, um, probably through 2022. Um, I'm definitely anticipating that our, our findings will go down significantly since most of those procedures are in place and have, you know, enhanced internal controls, things of that nature. Totally understand. And I know that this will be discussed at the DUOP meeting per um, Dr. McNulty. Um, can you just share a little bit about that financial finding? Uh, what, what, what type of financial finding was it? Um, so that financial finding was just based on really overdrawn cash balances. 
So you have a financial statement. Um, most of that obviously was the operations fund. The operations fund had a deficit, had a negative balance. So they considered that an overdrawn cash balance as well as some of the reimbursable grants, things of that nature. And a lot of that could be timing related. It could mm -hmm. be the end of um, a, a cutoff of the reporting period before the reimbursement was received maybe a month later. Um, so that's usually pretty standard in school districts that because of those reimbursable grants, they could be off a month or two, depending on when the reporting period is cut off. And then the operations fund kind of just is what it is. That's the deficit that we've been dealing with for the last couple of years that we're slowly climbing out of. So I think as that fund becomes more whole, we won't have that finding going forward. Um, besides the overdrawn cash balances, it was just training on internal controls. Um, you know, it's no secret that Gary Schools has had some turnover. So things like that, as we continue to get new hires and new right. employees, we're making sure that they're all receiving training manuals, adequate internal control training, right. um, policies and procedures district-wide are being updated as well. So it really wasn't anything, um, you know, necessarily monetary finding. It was just more of a control compliance. Okay. Okay. Um, that's, that's fair enough. And um, we will definitely get more information about the audit during the do-up meeting, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay, all right. And that do-up meeting is gonna be, you said next week or week after next? It's next week, Tuesday. Tuesday, okay, yes. Tuesday of next week, okay. Yes. Um, I just wanna make sure that um, the person that submitted that question, that they know that they need that to get more information, they would um, call into that do-up meeting to hear the discussion at that time. Yes. And if they have questions, they can ask the do-up they need to put their question in five minutes, at least five minutes early, but it's best to do it a day or two early so that your question, um, you can, you will be able, your question will be answered. I just want to let that to, be known to the person. To, if they happen to miss that, if they can't make it, they can certainly email us. Um, and also we post it on our website and we can give it to them after the fact as well. If they can't make that meeting, okay. we just want to make sure that they have an opportunity. To All right. So just for the, for the public's, um, um, information that if you have any questions for the um, DOAP advisory, for the DOAP board to address, please make sure that you get your questions in early. You can get those questions in directly to the DOAP um, um, contact um, person. I believe everyone has that, that email address, or you can get your questions into um, Dr. Paige McNulty's office, and she will get that to the DOAP board so that your question will be addressed during the DOAP meeting. Um, we'll do that, and I'll make sure that I'm present in there also. And and the questions that I the questions that I that that you sent, I will make sure they'll post it. But if you have any additional questions, please do so and at, at your leisure. All right, um, Dr. McNulty, wanna um, is there any other questions from the board? I just have a statement. Um, yes. So this is for Dr. McNulty. As far as the website and the availability of information. Uh, are we posting, are you posting everything that for the public, for them to locate it and to review it? That was one of, one of the questions that I received as far as some statements about not being able to locate information that should be public on your website. So I just want you to clarify for the group. Sure. For the yes. yes, they're all posted there. There's a link. Um, if they can't find it, please call Irma. My administrative assistant will help them navigate it, but there is a link and all of the documents are there. Yeah. So that's clear for everyone who wants to know that it is on the website or you can contact Irma, correct? Correct. Okay. You're on mute, Marlon now. Um, Dr. McNulty, if you have any um, final final comments or things that you want to share with the public, please do so at this time. Okay. I just want to say a big, huge thank you to Ms. Shani uh, Shalita, Shanita Starks because she, um, when we had our, but and continue to have our busing issue, I called her and she immediately um, gathered uh, the troops on her end and worked with us in tandem and helping get students to school. So I wanted to publicly thank her again. She's been wonderful and a great partner. And we've had lots of great partners in that endeavor. We have eight pastors driving for us right now um, and uh, lots of people helping with that situation as many school districts are, are hurting for bus drivers right now. 
Um, I continue to say we are looking for bus drivers. If anybody wants a job, I do know that Illinois Central is um, offering a, um, I think it's a $3,000 signing bonus to come uh, drive buses. Um, but I, I wanted to say thank you to her. Um, we continue to make lots of uh, great improvements utilizing our 1065 funds and our ESSER dollars. The tennis courts have all been re-fenced and they look fabulous. We did have a survey that we posted online for the community so that they could pick what colors they wanted the surface of the tennis court to be. And so they did pick and that's gonna be done here in the next week or two. So I'm anxious to see the new tennis courts resurface so the students can start using that again. Um, additionally, we have our first girls golf clinic that's gonna be starting and we haven't had that in a long time either. So that's exciting. The locker rooms have all been repaired out of the field house and the staff and administration um, just finished their curriculum meetings and they did pick a new math curriculum. So we have new English this year and next year we'll have new math. So we're, we're excited about um, being able to op offer those opportunities to the students and the staff. Thank you. You're on mute. I try to make sure that I'm not doing any additional chatter. Um, <laughs> Okay, it seems that the board has no, no questions and thank you, um, um, Dr. McNulty and, and Ms. Ms. Wolverton, you had did great reports today, excellent reports, very informational. Uh, again, um, I wanna thank everyone for your time and consideration and, and holding this meeting, especially as you share information with the public to make sure that we are being as transparent as we can. That's always important anytime that you're dealing with the community and public dollars. Um, so thank you all. At this time, I'd like to call for um, an adjournment of the meeting. So moved. I second it. Okay. Um, has been moved and properly second. Call for any questions, comments? Hearing none. Oh, by the way, just one thing, right? Um, we now have quorum, so um, um, I, I think that we're that we're good. This this still will be information. I guess we can take a vote, Chancellor Keon, if I'm not mistaken. It just slipped my mind um, to to approve the um, Miss Wolverton's report, her financial report. Is that in order? Before we close out, I think that now we have quorum, we can take that vote. That is correct. Yes. So- Move um, to accept. Ms. Starks? Accept. Second, okay, I accept. So it's been, um, it's unanimous that the budget is, is accepted as information to go into um, archive. So um, thank you all. And we've been um, moved and prop, everything is good. So the meeting is adjourned and it is now, um 442 so thank you you all have a, a blessed evening and i look forward to um our next meeting thank you very thank much you thank you yes. thank you take care